Hi, Dave Scotland for CGSWAT.com and today we're going to take a look at a little bit of basic rigging in 3D Studio Max and this is a, a process that was taught to me uh, quite a few years ago now by a brilliant instructor that I had for 3D called Steve Britton over at Quantum College in Brisbane and uh, through this process I learnt so much about how bones uh, work without actually using bones in the process and the thing to remember about bones um, for rigging purposes in 3D is that the actual visible bone in the viewport is not what's important to the structure it's the pivot points that are important to the structure it's the location of the pivot points in fact when you rig an object uh, say it's a, a, a bipedal character and you put in the arms and the legs uh, and uh, all of the the various appendages or, or, or various bones it's not the bits in between the joints it's the actual joints that you skin the object to so when you apply skin over the top of the bones which keeps the mesh uh, of the character to the bones when you move the bones around and animate the bones all the skin cares about is the location of the pivot points not the visible bone and, and what you see in between the pivot points and that'll make this this exercise uh, really went a long, to, a long way toward me better understanding that process so what we're going to do is rig this this lamp up without using any bones and so I'll just bring this up in a left view I'll arc around a little bit to show you what it is it's just a very simple lamp uh, go to a wireframe there um, at the moment all of the pivot points are as they usually are when you create geometry they're in the center of the geometry so each object in the lamp its pivot point is in the center of its geometry which is usually what happens when you create geometry the pivot point is in the center of it now that's not really useful for um, creating a, a rig so the first thing we need to do, and this is, this is the usual process um, when you try to tackle any sort of rigging, is to make sure that your pivot points are exactly where they need to be in the structure in order to give you the movement that you require. So the, we'll start at the top here, and if we select the lampshade, I can bring up my hierarchy tab and, and click on the effect pivot only, and you'll see that my... Uh, Axis uh, gizmo here has changed. If I click that on and off, you'll see that it changes to look at. And we can now move the pivot point over to where we need to move it to. And in this instance, we need to move it right in the center of this sphere looking object, which is about there. And now we can switch off effect pivot only and give it a test with rotation and we'll see now it moves exactly as it should from the correct pivot point and uh, we might as well just take this globe and link it we're going to use the link quite a bit in a moment but we'll just link it to the lampshade so now when we rotate the lampshade the globe moves with it and we can take our upper arm effect pivot only and move that pivot point down to the center of this cylinder shaped hinge and that looks about right and we can test that and that's rotating around the correct pivot point do the same with the next one down the lower arm and effect pivot only drag that down to just inside that cylinder hinge just line it up with the center and then switch off effect pivot only we'll do the same with this base hinge effect pivot only and drag it down and we're going to line it up right on the center and switch off effect pivot only we can test that as well and it works and we might as well do the base given that uh, if we want to animate this lamp 
the base would be the sort of master or highest parent on the uh, on the hierarchy chain and it would always need to sort of pivot if it needed to pivot or line up with the floor or the uh, the ground plane um, and if we affect pivot only we just drag it down to that ground plane level down here just bring it right down and that's fine so now we have our pivot points exactly where we need to have them and it's always good to go to a separate view and just make sure that all of your pivot points are indeed on the center um, or, or centered on, on two axes and in this instance uh, the front axes um, and the left axes or the left view and the front view um, they certainly do line up in the center now if we just go back to our left view or get rid of our grid what we need to do is do a little bit of linking but before we do I'm going to um, create a dummy and uh, I guess this is uh, just something that I prefer to do and it's what a lot of animators prefer to do is it's really not good practice to grab hold of geometry to animate. It's always better to use controllers, uh, dummies, uh, spline controllers, just things that aren't in the geometry group of objects in your scene. And there's, there's a multitude of reasons, but um, and I'll certainly go into those in the future as we do a, f a few more sort of more in-depth rigging tutorials. But just f it's just something that I prefer to do. So I'm going to create a dummy, and uh, I'll just go to a top view and uh, create that. Just drag that dummy out. Just go to a left view again. It'll be down here on the base. And we're going to use our Align tool and click on the lampshade. And because I'm using pivot point for my align current object and target object, it's going to pop exactly to where it needs to go um, to line up with the pivot point of the lampshade object. And so what we can do now is uh, just grab the lampshade, link the lampshade to the uh, dummy, and then link the dummy to the upper arm and so now you'll see that if I rotate that upper arm both of those objects come with it the the dummy and the lampshade if I rotate the dummy it's just the lampshade and of course the the, the light globe but it's just simply linked to the lampshade so we can continue that linking now we can grab that upper arm and we're going to link it to the lower arm and if we now rotate the lower arm you can see that everything moves with it and if I grab the upper arm everything above moves with it and so we can continue that process we'll grab the lower arm and we will link it to that base hinge we'll grab the base hinge and we'll link it to the base object and so now if we move the base object everything comes with the rig and that's a good way of testing that you haven't left anything behind and you'll see now that we can take that base hinge and rotate and the whole lamp rotates with it and so on up the chain so for animation purposes you could certainly get away with just what we've done there um, but you would have to use what is called forward kinematics uh, and basically it sounds like a, a, a big word but it basically means if I want to put this lampshade um, pointing over here what I would need to do is rotate the base hinge over I'd have to rotate this top one up and then I'd have to rotate the dummy up to that position there and I'd have to set a keyframe and then I could move through so I could um, I could grab everything in in the structure there and double now that we've got all those linked we can double click on the base and uh, switch on the auto key there um, I could come through to say 20 frames, grab the, the base hinge, rotate it back, rotate this hinge back and rotate that back there and we have animation. And so that's a forward kinematic method of animating. To make life a lot easier we're going to use a uh, inverse kinematic form of animation. 
So what I might do is just grab this keyframe and drag it to frame one and then highlight it and delete it. And that way we've gotten rid of our animation and it's back in its original position. Switch off auto key. This is the uh, one of the reasons using uh, forward kinematics is more self-explanatory um, once we set it up you'll you'll get a greater understanding of what um, inverse kinematics uh, is and how it works inverse kinematics is based on just grabbing the object that you want to place over there and the rest of the structure follows along um, in its linking hierarchy so what we can do is just grab our base um, object which is our sorry our base hinge then we'll come up to Animation, IK Solvers, High Solver. And you'll see that we now have this dotted line that's waiting for us to click on an object that we want it to link to. So if we click on the dummy, it's now created an IK chain. And if I go into uh, wireframe mode, you'll see that we've got this white line moving up to the joint and then back over here. And it leads to a IK helper, which is this cross that's selected at the moment and now if I move that IK helper around it moves with the object now if I grab the help uh, the dummy it breaks so we need to get around that situation by creating another dummy and this will be our um, lampshade controller and this time we'll use a point dummy and just go to a top view again and I'll drag it out here go to a front view uh, sorry a left view and we will align it to that dummy and now what we can do is grab the point helper uh, the IK helper and it's named here IK chain 01 and we can also select the lampshade and then we will link both of those objects to the point helper and we'll rename this point helper to lampshade control and you'll see that if we grab that lamp we'll, we'll change the color of it to red for a controller and if we grab that point helper and move it around you'll see that we now have control of our lampshade and the main difference there um, if I was to come in here and just select the IK um, object the IK chain and move it around notice that the dummy the green dummy is is changing its orientation it's actually rotating around and if the lampshade was still connected to that um, helper then it would be rotating around as well but now that we have a controller it can rotate around and it really doesn't matter um, relative to the lampshade the lampshade is going to stay with whatever we do to that controller that point helper and we can rotate the point helper and that's going to give us our animation uh, on rotation and we can move the point helper and that gives us our animation like so and we can probably complete this rig by just creating one more um, dummy object we'll go to a top view this time we'll, we'll drag out a quite a big one and we're going to align it to the base of the lamp and just go OK. Now if we go into a left view you'll see that before we link it what I think we need to do is move it up line up the bottom of the dummy with the bottom of the lamp. Now we can go into our hierarchy effect pivot only use our align tool and align it to our base. And you'll see it pops down to exactly where the base pivot point was and now that dummy if I rotate that dummy it's going to rotate from the base where it should so we can grab our uh, base geometry and link it to the dummy so we now have control 
we'll rename that to uh, lamp base control so now we have our base controller and we have our lampshade controller so what we can do is bring up our H for select from scene and we can we can sort by, by uh, type here and grab all of the geometry click OK and then we're going to bring up our manager, our layer manager and we're going to click on the, see how they're selected in the viewport, we're going to click on create new layer and we will rename that to mesh and that means we have a, now have a layer in layer manager for all of our mesh objects and while we've got them uh, we can highlight that and just select highlighted objects right click object properties and just switch off frozen in show frozen in gray and that means if we freeze these objects now they're not going to turn gray in the viewport so we can click on the little freeze toggle here and now those objects are frozen I can't select them in the viewport which is which is always good practice for 3D animation animation of characters or objects you use your controllers to animate not the mesh and so we, we can freeze those objects and left in our default here are the dummies that make up the um, controllers so what we can do is we can grab our dummy and our IK chain and we'll select those create a new layer and we'll just call those hidden rig and then whatever's left will be our controllers we'll select those make a new layer and we'll call that anim rig and we can hide the hidden rig objects and so now in our we can close this down now um, now in our viewport the only things we can click on are the tools for animation so we have our uh, head controller or our lampshade controls and we have our rig our base master controller and you could certainly add more dummies you could add another huge dummy around the whole lot and link both of these controllers to that dummy and that would give you a controller uh, helper that can that can move the entire rig if you needed to do that and and then move these within that controller but basically what we've got there is a very very simple um, rig to give you movement and animation and we have done that without any bones without using any bones and any skinning and um, you could certainly use this exact process to rig an entire bipedal character you could um, instead of this lower arm here picture this uh, this lower arm could be um, say the upper arm in a, in a torso um, on, on a human character and this could be the lower arm and the lampshade is literally the hand or the wrist and you can use that inverse kinematic system where you've just got a controller and you move from the wrist and then you rotate the hand from that controller and so on back up into the body and uh, and uh, you would link the upper arm here to the shoulder and and the hip bones connected to the thigh bone and so on but the crucial thing to really grasp in this process is to know the importance of making sure that your pivot points are exactly where they should be for movement prior to doing all the rigging if you go ahead and rig and then have to move pivot points around you can get yourself into trouble in a big way and uh, and quite quickly too and uh, it's a great way to lose a few hours uh, to have because basically you have to start from scratch if you start to uh, screw that process up so that's a rig and we did it without bones and uh, thank you to Steve Britton who taught me that process uh, many years ago and um, that's a rig for you could go ahead and do maybe some Pixar uh, lamp animation to uh, to get yourself started with some some simple animation and we'll probably go we'll probably use this rig in the future to to uh, learn some animation tips so that's it for me until next time bye for now